Morning, it's day 74. Tim is making himself a coffee and we are up early. It's 8.30, we're gonna get picked up today to go to Mozzie Forest. I've been cracking the whip. Sarah only just made it. She started to wash and dry her hair with 10 minutes before we had to leave. I know, I needed to wash my hair. Um, and normally my hair takes about five minutes to dry. However, I just got out of the shower and the hair dryer is one of those not so strong. So, um, as you can see, my hair is still not dry. Um, but yeah, looking forward to today. Yeah, um, we're doing a, a load of things. I'm not totally sure what, as usual, I probably wasn't paying much attention. <laughs> but we're doing, well, I didn't because I called it a mozzie forest, but we're going to the mossy forest. We're going to a tea plantation um, and do some strawberry picking. So yeah, good times. And this is the outdoors. Of, of the Rovers Inn. Obviously, there are the few Rovers knocking about. And yeah, the weather is nice and clear. Um, they did say in the mornings it's better and then it does start to rain. So if you can see, look, blue skies. There we go. How's the coffee? How's the coffee? Uh, yeah, I've made it strong, wake me up, and uh, yeah, I'm loving wearing trousers in the top and having no humidity. Yeah, Really, isn't. really nice to be outside. Yeah, sometimes you don't appreciate these things, so yeah, I can see why the English came here when they got homesick. Yeah. Yeah. And she just checking because I was double checking. I was like, what time do they come? And she was like 10 minutes before half eight. And it was, uh, it's now 20 to nine. So she's checking. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one. Okay, perfect. Bye. Thanks so much. Enjoy your tour. Thank you. Have a good day. And another cool Land Rover. Oh, cool. Hiya! We've been picked up in our Land Rover and I'm a little bit of a fan, probably more so than the uh, Hiluxes that you see everywhere in Thailand. Uh, apparently all the farmers and uh, tour guides use them because they're just super functional and tough so they last. But, yeah, they're all, uh, they've all look kind of pimped out. This one's just been refurbished. and it looks pretty fresh. And I want, I've always wanted something that's quite high up the road because I'm small, so... Yeah, they're, they're quite basic inside. But this one's got like the aquatic sort of kit on it and it's uh, polished up to the max. Let's go. Cool. And, and see, Tim's going to get his scooter and I'm going to get one of these. Final pickup. It's going to be a full Land Rover, and I get the front seat. Got the upgrade.
I've been instructed to duck down while Sarah takes a photo. Um, we've come to the tea plantation first, a little free spot that our tourist guide knew about. Um, apparently Mossy Forest is going to be really busy and in general this weekend is going to be super super busy. Uh, not only do they have a Friday, Saturday uh, weekend but the King has come to visit so he's spending the weekend here um, and that's going to bring the crowds but maybe we'll get a little a little glimpse of him I don't know apparently he does walk around and isn't opposed to meeting and greeting the public um, apparently he does roll pretty thick with the security so whether you get to shake his hand I don't think so let me see if I can stand up Sorry, there we go, I've got to go again. Favorite? What's your favorite tea? I'm Motoko. Well, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm Motoko. Just a man running a tea Well, we like the coffee. We like the chum, the coffee and the tea mixed yes. together. That yeah, one's good. Try with the Milo. What a view! Rolling down the hills. It's been cultivated for the tea and I've been learning a little bit from our guide. Um, I'm lucky I've got the front seat um, and they make a variety of blends um, from masalas, spiced teas, English teas, Earl Greys um, and they export it um, all around the world. So I'm looking forward to trying that. But these tea plantations, what a place to play hide and seek it would be. They've got these little runways all the way through they are pretty uh, precarious so I reckon it would be pretty easy to stumble and break a leg and um, there are workers further down in the field the sun is shining the weather forecast is good so let's uh, I think I'm gonna head back I think maybe the other people have had enough of this but I could stay here for a long time to be honest if we see along the way we see Minimally 40 to 70 kilo, one bag. Okay. How they carry up through that, they just put on top of the head, walk. Wow. They just put on top of the head and walk. They have strong heads. But he is not so climbing. If, example, they pluck on top of the hill, they need to carry down. Oh. That one is much more harder. Two, the plate is less. <laughs> Mm 
me the pluckers are working hard and they've got to they're paid per kilo 36 cents um, they work in a team and then they get paid for what they've cumulatively collected at the end of the day um, it's quite a low wage apparently um, and they have to be working hard out here in the sun luckily it's cooler up here in the highlands um, but they do get given accommodation and their food and the only bills they have to pay are their electricity and if they want additional groceries um, these um, farms have been in uh, Scottish hands for since 1929 um, and they produce a massive, massive income for the families that still own them. Um, there are four farms and they make 26 billion a year net, uh, which is crazy. No wonder the king's coming to visit. He, visit. he wants to check up on his tea business. Well, it's not his, but he gets cut in on the tax. Really beautiful, look. And they're busy working away. I want to get involved. This one is for the white tea, this one for the green tea. For the green tea? Yeah. That's the crazy. The green is still young. Okay, why they use this kind of leaf and why they call it the white tea, okay, it's been still pure. But the best green tea in the world is from Japan. Secha and Mecha. So oh, okay. matcha, that one is the most uh, best drink in the world. Mm -hmm. so I'm just uh, just chewing the uh, the freshest part, the un, uh, unripened bud, and it is very bitter. We're gonna go and get some tea now. Well, it's just a, yeah, prefer it in a cup of tea, I think. Most of the thing already, most of it is like a small community here. School, childcare. Training, most Hindu staple, church, everything, cafeteria, everything already been provided. This is their house. All houses. inclusive. All, All inclusive. inclusive. <laughs> Only for me. They like it. They, they, say, like it. We they might inclusive. like it, they might not like it. Okay, this one is a church. And they like Lokalo, on top there, there is a clinic. This means not, okay, the clinic not only for. Tito. It's busy here, everyone's decided to come and taste a bit of tea today um, and there's even a massive queue for the toilet. I didn't take too long but Sarah's still queuing and she's been, I don't know, 15 minutes. Um, we've probably got an hour here so hopefully she can get a hustle on and we can get a little tour of the um, factory, maybe get to taste the tea. Maybe we'll just wait outside the toilet for an hour. And the suggestion box comment from me is going to be, yeah, you need to build some more toilets. <laughs> there was, well, there's four toilets, two were out and one lady was in there. I don't know if she was having a shower, I don't know. Hopefully not in a toilet, but maybe the maintenance <laughs> could be a little like bit better. They're making enough money from those tea profits. They are going dark, they're running things secretly here, no photos or videos in the factory. I know the process is uh, meant to be semi-original, I think they've had one equipment change since their inception, but it's running on stuff that dates from the 1960s apparently. But yeah, I think it's time to turn the camera off and uh, learn the secrets of how to make I mean, a multi-billion dollar industry. I've got a good memory, I'll learn it and then we can make it at home. You haven't got a good memory. I do, it's my job. <laughs> I do have a good memory, just on film. In terms of learning processes, choreography, dance, movement. Okay, you're gonna do the uh, telling of all the processes when we're done, yeah? No, I'm on holiday. It was quite a short tour, it was a walk through the factory, um, done and dusted I'd say in under 10 minutes. Um, so Sarah, what was that tea drying process you were the one who was going to recount? I mean, I couldn't find what three was, so I don't know that. But one I'm guessing is plucking, two is rolling, 
three, don't know, maybe fermenting, uh, four, drying, and then fifth is sorting. Okay, that's not bad. Well done. You did better than I would have done. I need to figure out what the third stage was. Is it fermenting? This is the cham, the, the white tea and the coffee. The ones we like. Good. It's really good. I do like the cham, the mix with coffee and tea. A few little samples. We've had the coffee cham, which this is, is the, the mix. Green. Green tea. The peach tea, which was cold, was really good. So this green tea has had condensed milk added, so it's very rich and it's sweet. And the peach tea was cold um, and it had a real kind of lick round the back of your throat of um, almost like a fermented feel. It was very fresh though. Um, yeah, really good. Drink up, I want to get some more cham using the freebies. Best of the Highlands, waiting to get past. Um, but yeah, picked a really lovely day, perfect day really, to um, come and visit this plantation. The skies are clear, um, the weather is just perfect, not too hot. Um, and yeah, just the light bouncing off the, the mountains and all the, the tea plantation. It's just so pretty. So the main walkway up to the tea shop, um, it's busy. Um, let me just quickly spin around so I can extend my arm for a moment. So what interests me about this place? Well, I don't know, not the obvious maybe. Um, I find it amazing that you still have people from, I guess, the times of empire who, um, who own these plantations, four, four, two in Singapore and two here in Malaysia. Um, and it's making $26 billion. And these are families that probably are hi hidden away in the highlands of Scotland that you know nothing about. But it's just absolutely crazy that that kind of wealth is generated and brought in kind of anonymously. I I've never heard of uh, Best of Highlands tea brand. I mean, I'm sure they are exporting and it's, uh, it's a big company. Um, but yeah, very interesting to me and uh, the people behind the shadows that secretly control the world we live in maybe the conspiracy theorist in me gets a thinking i'm really glad that we're able to visit this plantation because i'm more of a tea drinker um i do like coffee but coffee makes me sleep so i'm always let's have tea and i'm not a drinker of alcohol either so tea is my drink of preference so it's nice to see how they how they roll it they dry it the whole process of it all and um and yeah and just enjoy these stunning views The family that own these plantations, the Scottish family, are they quite yeah. mysterious? Are they or? Uh, because now it's the third generation. Okay. Now it's like the line of okay. Okay. 
Do they live back in Scotland, do you know? Uh, or? Yes, now they are still in Scotland. Now they are still in Scotland, but still they are British, not in Scotland. Because they are mixed with, uh, they are mixing the John Archibald Russell, the first founders, is a British people. He's from, he's uh, one of the British surveyors that opened up the Cameron Island. And his wife is from Scotland. Even though not doing some job, they still have a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, definitely. One year, 26. For the, uh, almost 100 years already. How much is it? Okay. Mozzie.